Hello ladies and gentlemen, and uh, with the typical sentence after the release is always directly in front of the next release, I like to give you another update around the Identity Manager and this time we are talking about Identity Manager 9.1.1 which is Service Pack 1 of version 9.1 of the Identity Manager. Some of the content is already discussed in sections we discussed before, here I only will reference about it. And um, if you have heard about it, I'm not talking about the minor release 9.1, which is a feature release, you might remember, I'm talking about the service pack to that specific release. And this is a good chance to talk shortly about LTSs again. You know LTSs don't contain features and I'm doing this session just because in the service pack 1 for 9.1, which is a feature release, there are some features additionally to bug fixes available. And this is a good sign for all the people who want always to go with the time, who are interested in every new development we just do in Identity Manager, just to keep on the feature release path. For people who are not that interested in features, I just remember, it might be a good option to follow the LTS path. Now let's start and talk about the new features. The first thing what we should talk about in that very specific release is the support for SQL Server 2022. Typically our R&D development just gives you the okay for a specific SQL Server version. That happens now with SQL Server 2022, but the database of course needs to be in the compatibility level for 150 and this is the compatibility level of SQL Server 2019. Remember we talked about linked accounts and some new features about linked accounts in upper sessions and of course how to, yeah, I like to say, handle specific stuff. That was improved again in version 9.1.1 and we just added a new configuration parameter. You can see that on the left lower, which is QER person user keep membership of linked accounts. And that configuration parameter handles how group memberships of linked accounts gets handled, for example, if an identity where the linked account is linked to gets deactivated. The whole behavior can configure exactly there. There's no standard behavior anymore. There are now a couple of standard behaviors and these are configurable. Behind all of that is the old thing, how deep a linked account should be managed or not. Typically a linked account should not be managed. That means there's no property flow from the identity to the linked account, etc. But now yeah, the next step is to talk about group memberships on deactivation, for example. On the right hand side of the slide, we are talking about new support for target system platforms. That means with 9.1.1, some new versions of target system platforms gets uh, supported. There is, for example, Oracle eBusiness 12.2.10. The One Identity Safeguard version 7.1 is supported. The Active Roles version 8.1.1 is supported. And the Secure Password Extension Password Manager 5.11.1 is as well supported. Now let's talk about some high value solution. First of all, behavior driven governance. This could be done very short. There was a briefly introduction in a video before in that specific training. Um, and uh, what is there is a lot of improvement. And that is, I think, the important message. The main problem is that we are integrating one login into our one identity product. This could only be done on the API side of things and the API needs to be increased. And with that, back to the slide. On the left hand side of the slide, you can see we added attestation policies and workflows. And these workflows are as well containing out removal processes. The complete processes are there just to identify uh, unused application access. And if this is configured, to remove the users out of the roles that was responsible for getting that application access. And now the right hand side of the slide, as you can see, we was adding just company policies and these company policies are able to identify applications which are not used in the same way than users which are not using uh, one login and outlining them to the audit audience. 
If we look at the governance level of things, then first we can look into the attestation. It is now possible in Microsoft Teams to attest the team memberships, which is one of the improvements of this very specific service pack. And um, yeah, it is a feature which is more and more necessary and of course beneficial because MS Teams is more and more important in all big enterprises. On the sub side of things, there are more or less two improvements. One, of course, is the first one. The authorization definition of sub functions can be formulated such as all the permitted values of an authorization object must exist in order. And there is a second one that there are compliance root properties which are extended. Behind all of that, it's a new joint venture with a company which builds compliance rules just for SAP for different business types. And that company works very close together with one identity and the ideas of that companies are pouring as well into that very specific rule engine. The idea is from their tools just to import something into our tools. This is what is implemented. And part of that are some interesting features. And just one of these, for example, is the feature that we are now able as not only to combine our compliance rules with OR, we can now as well combine different sub rules with AND. Now let's talk about selected enhancements. And what you can see on the left side of the slide, there is very often to see the term performance. That means 9.1.1 is as well a service pack that improves performance a lot. Behind that is a very close work of R&D together with customers. There were support cases, of course, and there was developers solving support cases. And part of all of these things and working closely together with these enterprise customers, we improved performance in many, many different areas of the identity manager. I don't want to talk about each of these areas. It is, of course, job service in the same way than the SQL calculation engine, etc. A lot of things, even the web was improved in performance. That is always meant if you can see somewhere the wording performance improvements. We talked about trusted source key uh, involvement. That is something that was improved again and discussed in one of the videos before. And it might be of interest that even our database agent service CMD, which is the replacement for the SQL Server agent startup procedures, knows now a new parameter called alive, which checks just all 15 minutes to figure out if the database agent is running. There is a feature, of course, in the data importer, which allows now better to match column names from import sources to the importer. And there is as well a new feature in all the code windows where first time the IntelliSense in the identity manager called autocompletion is something you can turn on or turn off. Some enhancements from the website. First of all, the password reset portal, policy violations. That means password policy violations in that specific tool was just seen as script errors in the past. There are a little bit cosmetics that happened and these cosmetics will now show the same error messages just as standard errors, which makes the whole thing a little bit nicer to see. A short improvement as well to the API documentation. A lot of people know that from the REST services as the Swagger front end that sometimes was just failing with a token header problem. This is now solved, of course, finally as well. And besides some security improvements that happens as well to the standard web, you know the standard web of one identity manager is always in penetration tests and uh, the result out of that gets implemented. Additionally to that, we have as well the performance improvements there. Um, this is something that happens uh, nearly in each release that we get response from our enterprise customers and improving performance where it is necessary. And now let's talk about some target system enhancements, starting with the synchronization editor. There are now additional tests available, especially in conflict handling during the simultaneous handling of objects. This could be helpful. It is a reporting feature and you can improve it. Performance optimization happens in many places. I don't want to go into details. Now, synchronization projects and synchronization at all is faster. 
The verification of object mapping rules was improved as well. They are now more detailed and more helpful. This is something might help the one or the other building synchronization projects from the scratch. If you just start debugging scripts, the synchronization editor now allows backups. This helps especially if you want to go back to a status before. And last but not least, a very interesting improvement is the that the maximum number of attempts synchronizing an object could be configured. In the past, there was a default configuration that was at the end leading to some attempts before such an object was marked as a failed object during the synchronization. This amount of attempts is something that you can now configure on the synchronization object. Therefore, you step into the startup configuration to the project properties. And again, synchronization editor, this time migration of synchronization projects. You know the one or the other have seen that. It could be a challenge if you have complex synchronization projects available from an older version and you want to upgrade them to a newer version. Therefore, some improvement happens. That means it is now easier to get that without any error upgraded. Last but not least, on the one login side of things, we talked about these things in previous videos. There are now a new milestone reached and that milestone says everything from an identity manager perspective is done to what is possible in the API of one login today. And we finalize that with some reports, some role exclusions, and of course, account definitions to get accounts in one login systems. However, this is not the last improvement there. We know with the next version, the API of one login will be improved again. And with that, the identity manager will improve the functionality as well. On the Azure Active Directory side, some minor improvements. First of all, group claims was extended in a way of it is easier and it works better in Azure. Multi-line descriptions are available for policies. Performance improvements happens, of course, again, and there is an improved documentation, of course, of the, uh, of the permissions required for registering an enterprise application that will help the one or the other to connect these things. On SharePoint Online and Exchange Online side, again, performance improvements. This is born out of, I like to say, some tickets from support which was solved. Of, uh, here our enterprise customers made a lot of good work just investigating with their huge data to allow us to improve the performance. We talked very briefly about the SAP changes. Here are some more. You see there is a, there is a BAPI transport available. This BAPI transport um, is also deployed as a workbench transport. However, this is something you have to insert into your SAP system together with the customer. Some minor changes as well, the improved mapping of external identifiers, for example, and the direct modification of a very specific SAP table um, that happened. All of these things are minor extensions from my perspective, and they are very helpful for people using SAP. And one thing more that happens in some places of the identity manager in this very specific service pack, and this is the advanced outstanding object handling. It is now possible from a target system owner perspective to have enough permissions to handle outstanding objects. Therefore, a new a set of new permissions was given to these specific people so that they can use handling the outstanding object. This is one step more into the direction that maybe this functionality in the future will be available in the data management of the web portal. Okay, that was future talk, but currently they are now possible in the manager just to handle the outstanding objects. Two more, there's the Oracle EBIS and there is Google Workspace, of course. On the Oracle EBIS, there is exactly the same implemented than I was talking before on the SAP side. That means the handling of outstanding objects, this time for Oracle EBIS system owners. On the Google Workspace, of course, there was a minor update, a necessary update. Remember, there exists the SKUs for license management. They are implemented in the Identity Manager as a list of limited values. 
Reason for that is the API of Google don't allow to get this information back out of Google. So we have to hard code that into the identity manager. And every time if Google just changed that specific list, we need to do that as well. In the service pack one of identity manager 9.1, this is upgraded again. That means it is now correct and equal to Google to the current date. Some enhanced governance properties, of course. There is first of all the improved displaying of samples and policy collections. This is an additional feature to the attestation categories. Remember, we talked about them uh, before. However, this is now easier to see uh, and better to understand, and that is always a good improvement. On an attestation run perspective, there was a change as well which is pretty cool. You can now cancel attestation runs if they are not complete done. That means complete decided. In this case, it makes sense if you cancel that to restart such an attestation run again. This is sometimes helpful if something is going wrong during the definition, you start the attestation run, you figure out there is an error, then you can cancel the run, you can correct it and run it again. Improved performance as well for the IT shop and the whole web portal. And in the manager, you remember there is a way just in identity audit to look into the request history and to see the complete request process. This was improved as well in a way of that multi request resources are now displayed in the request history. This was not the case in the past. It is now possible and very helpful, of course, for identity manager operations. Since a while exists, the reduce approver calculation parameter in the config params that was everywhere included and used, but it was not considered determining the fallback approvers. This is now solved as well. Fallback approvers will now as well determine that very specific parameter. And with that, we end these updates as well. I hope you enjoyed it. And I see you next time when we will talk about the new version 9.2, which is on the horizon of something that will be developed right now. And that means see you next time.